pray. We're going to spend some time looking at our sunflower today. And one of the things that is so important when we look at the sunflower and we're drawing it is that we don't draw a flower that we're remembering from our head from some other place, some other time, but we really spend time looking at and studying this subject. If we're looking at the back of the flower, how is it put together? If we're looking at the front of the flower, how many petals are there? Where do they overlap? Do they turn or fold over? Um, how wide is the stem? What is the proportion? If I take the stem compared to the center of the flower, I can fit about, if I use my pencil, I can measure, it's about the tip of my pen, and I can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven times across the center of the flower how wide the stem is. The stem is not like a tree trunk. How does the stem branch out? Where are their buds? How do the leaves fit onto the stem? All of those things are important. So today I'm not going to show you how um, to draw. I'm going to show you how to see the flower. I'm going to be your eyes. So when I'm drawing, I'm going to demonstrate how to start and then I want you to copy uh, the style of my drawing, okay? Um, and so, one of the things that we'll notice is when we look at the leaves, the edges of the petals, I should say, are smooth. If we look at the edge of the center, it's, it's not smooth. So my lines in my drawing need to reflect that also. When I looked at our drawings from the other day, I also noticed that most people put there are images right in the center of the paper. So today, put your finger in the center of the paper, and I want you to come up and to the left. That is a spot where we're going to start our drawing. So whenever possible, we don't want to put our image right in the middle of the paper. And if I draw with pencil, it's hard for you to see what I'm drawing with. So today, I'm going to be drawing with Sharpie. Okay, so I'm up and to the center and I'm looking at the blossom and I'm thinking about a clock. So I'm going to kind of go around the edge. I talked about how the outside edge of the flower center has texture. It is not smooth like the petals, so my line needs to reflect that. Okay. Next, I like to start, again, thinking about a clock. So I'm going to start right here about 12 o'clock. And I'm noticing that this petal is on the top. And I want you to draw large. You'll notice my petal is going off the edge of the paper. And so I'm also noticing that I see some folds or some details here, okay? Now I'm going to skip this one that's behind for right now, and I'm going to go to the edge of the next flower petal, and it has a little curve, and then I'm going to stop because I have a petal in front. When I come to this next petal, I'm coming back. I want to check where the edges touch, so I know where to bring out the blossom. And it has a little curl here, so I have to show that. So I see where it's turning over, and I see a little part of the petal behind. Okay? How are you doing? Is everybody doing fine? We're going to do one petal at a time. So if you're, if I'm going too fast, pause the video, do your drawing and catch up. The video gets too long if I um, pa pause and wait for you to draw. So you pause the video whenever you need to 
and let's see where this blossom comes out. And if I lose my place, which sometimes happens when we're drawing, it's okay. Remember, if I wanted a photograph, I would use a camera. So I'm trying to capture the personality of the blossom. Just like when we look at the students in class, we don't ha have twins. So now I'm uh, right here. This is the petal I just drew. So now I'm going to look where this petal touches this petal that's coming out from underneath. And the edge is not flat, it's not smooth. So I want to be sure and show that. Sometimes our folds or wrinkles come out from the center and sometimes we'll notice that they come out from the edge. Now this next one is underneath and it's a pretty cool an important blossom petal. So I'm going to look at that contour and again I'm not going to draw all the way up to the center because there's a blossom another petal coming out. I do however want to put in my fold and this one goes the line goes all the way down the blossom petal. And now I'm coming around. I want to be sure that I'm not too small and I'm going to stop because again now I'm working with this next petal and it's going to come out and even though if we flattened all the petals out they would be a similar shape they're not similar because they're in a, they each have their own personality, so they're not going to be identical. On this one, let's go back before we go on. Our fold comes from the edge. Okay, and now I'm over here about 8 o'clock. This one is on top of both petals. And... Let's adjust the paper just a little bit here. And again, the edge is not straight and the petal gets more narrow as it comes back to the center. My next petal goes underneath, but I'm going to start on this top edge. So it's about 10 o'clock. and it comes around behind. And on this petal, my wrinkle or my fold is right here. Okay. I'm going to skip the next petal for just a moment. So I'm going to come up here at about 11 o'clock. And this petal is folded over. So I can only see the front. Don't worry too much about making a mistake. Um, nobody's going to know. Okay, so now I can't see any more of that blossom petal, but now I'm going to come back and fill in this one. And I see a little bit of the blossom going behind. And here the wrinkle is on top and it actually goes all the way to the edge where it turns <coughs> and now I have one that's in between it's underneath right here so I'm going to come back to the petal that I just drew and see how much petal comes out underneath. Where does the edge curve? And do I see any fold? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, now the next thing I have to look at is the proportion of the stem. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom of the blossom and I'm going to look at where uh, 
let's change markers. My stem comes down. Okay, stop. Okay, we'll start here. And again, remember it's narrow. But I have to look at where is it branching off into the part that goes into the bud. So how is that coming up? And what kind of shape do I see? Some of the bud has unfolded a little bit. So, um, I have these kind of overlapping shells that are going to become another blossom. When I come down here a little bit more, how does the leaf come out? And where does it come out on both sides of the stem? Where is that edge? And it's turning over, so I see a little bit of the crossover. And on some of our leaves, sometimes we can see a central vein. Just like we have veins, flowers have veins. And I really can't see much more detail than that. So I'm not going to add much more detail. And I'll come down the stem a little bit further. And just like writers edit, artists edit. So I'm not going to put in every leaf on your flower, you blossom, you don't have every petal. If we do that, our drawing sometimes gets too cluttered and too busy so it, the leaf is turning over and I can't really see much of the texture here or the shell of the bud here so I'm going to simplify that a little bit and I want to put in some of this leaf behind you'll notice that I start with what's in front and then I pick up my pen or pencil and draw behind. Here's the center vein and the leaf is turning over so this is the top and this is the back so when I look at the back I see that center vein and I don't need to draw all of the veins but I see a few so I want to show or suggest the few that I see. Now on the top side, I can't really see any veins, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about color for a moment. So we're gonna switch drawings. And um, if we take a look at the drawing that's finished here, you'll notice that the colors are blended, okay, and layered. So I'm going to show you how to start part of the blossom. And if we look at the stem and the leaves, you'll notice the color is blended. So on this part of our drawing, we're really going to pay attention to color. So the first thing I want to do is to pick out the main color of the blossom, which is yellow. And then I want to pick out my orange, because orange and yellow are neighbors. And I'm going to, going to also use red, okay? Now, um, I will be adding a color wheel image to this assignment as reference materials. So if we are looking at our color wheel, we have violet is opposite yellow. 
and blue is opposite red. Uh, blue is opposite orange, excuse me, and opposite red is green. So we're also going to use these three colors. Okay. So on this drawing, I'm going to start here at the bottom of the blossom. We'll get our blossom back here. And so <clears throat> I'm going to put in my base color first. Now when I look at this, I notice that some of the blossom is more yellow and some is more yellow orange. So I still want to put in the base color and you'll notice I'm not going horizontally or vertically. I want to go with the shape of the petal. So I'm going with the form. And then second, it's more yellow orange up here at the top. So whenever I'm using color pencils or crayons, I want to go light with my pressure so that I can blend more easily. Okay, and I want you to think of an Oreo cookie or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The color, the orange or yellow orange doesn't just stop like I cut my sandwich with a knife. Um, and if I decide that I need more yellow, then my yellow is my outside of my Oreo, my orange is my filling, etc. And then yellow back on top. I can always add more color, but it's hard to take it away, okay? I also want to look at where those shadow. Now, if I mix yellow and blue, I'm going to get green. So instead of starting with yellow, a cool color to make the shadow, I want to start with violet. And I'm noticing that it's darkest right up here where it comes off the center of the flower blossom. And again, I'm going with the form of the petal. And again, I don't have to worry about it getting too violet because I can come back with my orange or my yellow and blend it together. But I'm still thinking about the shadow and the light. And I need more yellow at the tip here. Now, interestingly, all the blossoms are yellow, but this next petal is a different kind of yellow than here. On this one, um, it's a little bit more orange up here at the top. So maybe on this one, again, I'm using white pressure. And I'm looking at the blossom. Where is the orange? It's kind of following my center a little bit and it's a little bit up here too. So I want to make sure that each petal is an individual, okay? It's not like coming out of a cookie press or a cookie cutter, okay? And again, I'm going with the form, the bend of the petal. And if I decide that my orange is darker, then red is darker than orange, but it's not darker everywhere. It's only darker in some places. So I want to look at how the petal's coming off the center. Where is that darker color? And as much as possible, I don't want to outline the flower edges. We might notice that a lot of times the darker values are along the edges, but we want to blend that color back into the center. Okay, we're not making an orange petal, we're making a yellow orange petal or a golden petal. So once I have the color established, then I can come in and remember yellow and blue make green, so I want to again start, <coughs> start with my violet. And you'll notice, interestingly, the red kind of changes. It tones it down to have a little bit of that violet in there. And again, I'm using white pressure 
And I'm noticing that this side of the blossom is a little bit darker. And so one thing that I want to watch out for is that I don't want this petal and this petal to become too much the same. So as I'm working around my flower, I might have to come back and add a little variation there. Okay, let's take a look at the stem. This is green and this is green, but they're different kinds of green. The stem is yellow green, and if you look carefully, you'll see a light side and a shadow side. So I might use yellow as my base color, but probably the yellow green would be a better base color. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm going to put that down. And if I think about the color wheel, which you'll have as reference, the lighter side I might come back and add more yellow because it might be yellow green, yellow green. And the shadow side, I could use green, but I'm gonna be a little bit more bold. And I don't think that's the blue I want. Let's use this one. I want the regular blue, not the blue green. Okay, we talked about on the color wheel and I have to move my hand a little bit to see where the shadow is, how it's coming up. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Opposite of green on the color wheel is red. So I can bring in a little red and it tones the green down a little bit and adds a little more interest. I want to try to feather the strokes so I'm not making a green stripe. And if I move my hand, I'll notice that over here, this, this stem is a totally different green. So I might even grab my brown, which I'm, uh, there it is. And it looks a little more brownish green in the stem. So I'm gonna be building and building and building. Need a little more green in here. Where I have the front of a leaf and where the leaf is turned over, I have to kind of squint my eyes and decide, is it lighter on top or lighter on the bottom? And I think it's lighter on the top. Again, I'm looking at, try not to go horizontal or vertical. Look at the form. Where is the light? Where is the shadow? How is the light moving around? And then I'm going to put since we decided that it was darker on the bottom, it's still going to be green, but blue-green is darker than blue. And um, then I'll come back with my blue as well. And I see there's a little bit of shadow here on this side. And I'll notice that some of these same colors and shadows are up here on some of these parts on the bud that is not yet open. So I want to look at where is it dark and where is it light. So I'm not going to make them all green or blue. I have to come back and build the color, but I'm establishing that base color first, that outside layer for the Oreo. And on this part, I'm going to come back and use my yellow-green because I'm noticing it's lighter here. I can always add more dark with the green or with the blue. And what color did we decide was opposite green by looking at the color wheel? It's my red. So I'm going to come in and try to put in some shadows and vari use variations. Our warm and cool colors, the yellows, and oranges and reds against the blues and greens and violets are very important. We're going to be using those all year long whenever we talk about or use color. 
Now I can also use my orange. They don't all have to be red. And I want to make sure that I'm taking them all, all of my color all the way to the edge of the form. And if it needs to be darker at the edge, I of course can add more blue. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that I want you to think about while you're working on your drawing. So I'm going to be looking at, are you creating a generic flower or are you really observing and studying the proportion of the stem to the petals, the texture of the petals. One thing I did not talk to you about yet is in the center. One of the things we noticed when we were drawing in class is that the, the centers of the flowers changed it. So the first day we drew, there weren't very many of these um, shapes open. But as, as we drew, the flowers changed. So on this flower, looking at the center, some of the parts that are open are kind of circular and they're more yellow. So I would want to establish the shape of those and I see a few in the center that are a little smaller. So I would want to establish color there. I want you to do the same thing in the center that we have done on the petals and the stem and the buds. And that is decide what is your base color and how we're going to mix that. So instead of brown and yellow, is it brown and yellow, brown and orange, brown and red, and where I have my shadows, I will need my blue, and I will need my violet, and I might need my green. So the center is also going to be a mix of colors. Maybe at the edge it's a reddish brown or an orangish brown. Maybe in the center it's more of a yellow brown. So you have to observe and study it and see what you see. Good luck and happy drawing.